about talking fingers. Maybe once or twice you've come across one or two people who don't speak nor hear. And you wonder, how do they communicate? If you stick to this episode of Catholic Faith Forum, brought to you by Dominican Media, you would learn about the hearing impaired and how the church can help to integrate them in the spiritual society. So stay tuned to this episode. We'll come back and we'll give you more details. As society stigmatizes those who are hearing impaired, God does not forget them and he draws them nearer to him because before him, all his children are the same and one. Even though those who are hearing impaired might not be able to hear, they can feel God's love, presence, and grace in their lives. And we too, even though we might not be physically hearing impaired, we might be spiritually, where we feel to listen to God's love, God's word, and his grace in our lives. Jesus. Welcome back, Saints. It's still that episode on Catholic Faith Forum. I am Mariana Utam, and as I said, today we're talking about how to empower the hearing impaired spiritually. On this episode, I have a seasoned guest in the studio with me. But before I tell you who this person is, just imagine having your mom on set, and then you are the one who is doing all the questioning. Nobody is going to punish you at this point. You're asking the questions. And every question you ask is going to be answered. Well, I'm in that situation right now. Because here in the studio with me, I have Mrs. Mirabel Chinonyerem Utam, who is here, and she's my mama. She is a seasoned teacher. She's a mother. She's a sister. She's a friend. She is also a hearing impaired teacher and also a sign language uh, interpreter at Holy Cross Cathedral, Lagos. I welcome you, Ma, to the studio. Thank you so much. Please don't beat me. I'm going to be asking a lot of questions today. Please don't try that. At, don't try that at home. Don't try it at home. You're yes, welcome. I'm only allowed to try it right now. <laughs> welcome. welcome. Yeah. I know for a long time, it has been your passion to always help children and people who are hearing impaired to be integrated in the spiritual society, you know, guiding them through catechism classes, making sure they receive the Holy Communion, and you've done a lot already. So how do you feel being on this set talking about them? Well, I feel highly like a letter. Okay. Being here, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. It's a great opportunity being here. Okay. So Thank are you, you so are you ready to, you know, answer our questions? You're ready? By the special grace of God. I'm oh yeah, ready. shake it, shake it, shake I'm it ready. in. <laughs> <laughs> shake it in. <laughs> Yes. All right. Okay. So, in um, in a broad perspective, now, what is hearing impairment? Um. Well, from a narrow point of view, hearing is just the act of decoding. When by the time one perceives sounds, you encode, you decode, then you'll be able to interpret what those sounds are, and you must do that through the, that very organ, which is the ear, which okay. is uh, yes, God has given to each and every one of us. And you know, the ear has three parts. Mm. Uh huh. It's divided into three. We have the middle, we have the inner, and we have the outer ear. Okay. Uh huh. So that's the uh, process of hearing. Then impairment is when uh, that's that condition, where the, the condition whereby that organ, that particular organ, that is meant to uh, carry out a particular function, has been impaired. It's this time around, the impairment can cut across any parts of the body. But when it comes to hearing, it's when it's particularly for the hearing. When the hearing has been impaired, the hearing has been. Mm. Or obstructed. obstructed. Yes, it must have been obstructed. It can be uh, as a result of sickness. It can be as a result of uh, external uh, forces and other things. It can be a result of other conditions. We have so many so many causes of uh, hearing impaired. Okay. As a matter of fact, yeah. Okay. So, um, what method of communication is used when someone is hearing impaired? Ah, hearing impaired. It depends on. Uh, 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 in actual sense, the hearing impaired has different levels. We mm. have. Um, we have, uh, because when one is hearing impaired, you've discovered that somebody cannot hear. He may have carried out some tests. It might be at a mild, mild rate. It might be moderate. It might be severe. It might be profound. Okay. So most of the time, depending on the, on the nature of the hearing loss, we call it hearing loss, after carrying out some tests and all whatnot, the most uh, effective means is using the sign language. Okay. Uh, using the sign language. So that is the most effective uh, method now. Although we have a lip reading, 
We have uh, speech reading. We have other means. We have even total communication, what we call total communication. Total communication, when it comes to total communication, it embraces all other factors. You have uh, the, the ones you use pantomime. You have, you, use, you have to make use of your body to make sure that you pass that message across to the person. We have sign language, we have lip reading, we have other methods of communication, we have simultaneous communication. Simultaneous communication, sometimes you use the lip. Those who must have acquired their, their hearing loss, it may be at a, at a very little age, because when you come to hearing loss, it can occur before birth, it can occur during birth, it can occur after birth, because we have congenital. Congenital, when it has, uh, that congenital process is when it has occurred, maybe why the child, where, where the baby, the person has not been given birth to. Then, adventitious is when the person must have uh, given, uh, had been given birth to. Probably in the, when the child may be a toddler, it can even be an adult. It can even be an adult. It might have, uh, then the person along the line, something may have occurred, then you acquire that uh, hearing loss. Okay. So that's uh, what we call adventitious and oh, then congenital. congenital. Okay, so we'll come back to still talking about this topic. But then let's go on a quick break. And on this break, we'll be learning more about the saint of the week. Over to you, Evelyn. <music> Our saint of the week is St. Louis the Ninth of France. St. Louis the Ninth of France, born in 1214, ascended to the throne at the age of 12, following the death of his father, Louis VIII. Despite his youth, Louis the Ninth showed remarkable leadership qualities and a deep devotion to his Catholic faith. He ruled France for over 40 years and he's remembered as one of the most exemplary kings in French history. Louis IX was known for his piety, humility, and sense of justice. He pursued policies aimed at promoting peace and justice within his realm, earning him the title of the peacemaker. He implemented numerous reforms to improve the legal system, striving to ensure fair treatment for all his subjects. Deeply committed to Christianity, Louis IX led two crusades to the Holy Land in an attempt to reclaim Jerusalem for Christendom. Although both campaigns ultimately ended in failure, Louis's piety and devotion to the crusading cause earned him widespread admiration throughout Europe. Louis IX's personal life reflected his devout faith. He lived a life of austerity often wearing simple garments and engaging in acts of charity towards the poor and needy. He also established hospitals and cared for the sick, earning him a reputation as a compassionate ruler. In 1297, while on his second crusade, Louis IX fell ill and died near Tunis. He was canonized as a saint by Pope Boniface VIII in 1297 just 27 years after his death. St. Louis IX is venerated as a patron saint of France and is remembered for his commitment to justice, peace, and the Christian faith. His legacy continues to inspire people around the world to this day. St. Louis IX, pray for us. All right, thank you for that beautiful one evening. Back to the questions we're asking. You spoke about um, um, sign language. So can yes. everyone learn it or, you know, how do we yes, get to Yes, sign language is a very interesting uh, language. It's like all the other languages we have in, uh, let me at least limit it to our country, Nigeria. We have Yoruba language, we have uh, Yoruba, we have Bibo, we have Hausa. Language, I mean, is a language which if you learn it, if you have the, the passion, if you have the interest, you will learn it. And more, if you want to learn sign language, start with the alphabet. Mm. It's like a little, a toddler, you see, a baby um, kindergarten child you send to school. You start from the scratch and start learning the ABCD. So if you want to learn sign language, you start with the alphabet. You start okay. this letter A. And this letter B. Okay, so I want C. you to hold. I want you to uh -huh. hold this okay. till like you know later on we will learn about this. But then let's you know continue with our questions. So I want to just ask you, um, with your first hand experience, how have these individuals been able to receive the sacraments despite their challenge? Hard. That's a very big task. Mm -hmm. Yes, that the Catholic Church is yet to surmount. Okay. Because, at least with the little experience I have had. And uh, if I'm to narrow it down to where I am working, I've been able to identify some of them who are Catholics. But incidentally, 
our Catholic Church, and sorry to say, our Catholic Church is still a little bit lagging behind. It still lags behind in, in terms of recognizing, or I don't know if I'm to use the word, sorry to say, if I'm to use the word, accept that we have these individuals in, uh, in our midst. Hmm. We have so many of them. There might be 10%, there might be between, let me say, 8 to 10% of the whole congregation that in Catholic Church. But because they have not been recognized, that's why most of them drift to other denominations and they, they can easily catch them there because we have interpreters there where everything is available for them. But coming to Catholic Church, probably we have not accepted the fact that we have them. But mm. we, before God, I'm, I know we have them there. Mm. And to the greater glory of God, I was able to organize from my school, organize uh, uh, about a few of them who I identified as Catholics. They have received the first, first Holy Communion. That was about two, 2022, 2021 precisely. Okay. And they don't really need that difficult task of uh, passing through uh, this uh, catechism uh, classes. At least they can know the the, uh, the rudiments, the, the, rudiments uh, the yeah. simple prayers. And we still need more. And so many of them are still out there. So there are a lot of them that are out there who still need this sacrament. So what, what would your suggestion be now to the church, you know, to help integrate them spiritually into the activities? Uh, my own little humble appeal and suggestion is, if my Lord we key into this this program, I don't know how wide it goes or how, by how narrow grace, it is. We are is. having hope to reach there. Okay, by yeah, the special so grace of God. Yeah. So, in my own humble suggestion, as the priests are being in their pastoral work, I don't know the processes they take. Probably from the seminary. Mm. Maybe if it is even junior seminary or even the senior seminary. By the time they are sending our, our priests, I think after priests to, after deacon and the, or maybe junior seminary, senior seminary, I don't really know the procedure. They, it should be imparted, inputted into their curriculum. At least sign language, okay. stroke and um, braille. Braille is for the visually impaired and sign language is for the hearing impaired. Even at least out of every, my own little uh, humble suggestion, if out of every 10 to 15 priests that are to be ordained, at least if two can be, made to learn sign language, it will really go a long way to help us. Because as I speak, yeah, we have association of the, uh, the, the sign, language, sign language interpreters. I think we are only two that are Catholics. And we cannot cover the whole Catholic church. And most of them, most of these uh, hearing impaired individuals, they belong to different parishes. That's another thing. That's the challenge we are having. If we are happen to get one in this parish today, this one is in another parish, we cannot visit all these parishes. And another thing, if the priest too, even those ones that are already been ordained, if the priest too can be made to go and learn this sign language, because we have them there. And when they are on the altar, they are there interpreting. We have few priests who, or, or those who can sign. But if more, we'll be encouraged to learn the sign language. And they, also the religious too. That's the Reverend Sisters too. I know more, more, more of the Reverend Sisters. I think most of them, when we study special education, Years back, some of them came to study the the core, but it's like the priests are still they are still not being encouraged to mm -hmm. learn this sign language. So my appeal to uh, to His Grace, our Chief Shepherd, please, if we can release some of the priests, because it's a very very necessary thing. Some mm -hmm. this very group, this very percentage of uh, souls are being left behind. Please, mm -hmm. they should carry them along. The visually impaired can hear if they are in the atmosphere, they can hear. The other mentally, we have other categories of. Uh, of a special needs children as we take them to be. Even if it's a mental retarded, the, 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 Down the, the, the Down syndrome, the auti autistic, autistic children, those ones can hear if they are being called. But the hearing impaired, that the communication gap is there. Is oh. there and is visible. Okay, okay, okay. So thank you for your suggestions. Um, how can the the society now at large, let's broaden it. How can the society accommodate people with this challenge? And also, you know, Exercise empathy towards them. Mm. Um, the society at large. Yeah, yeah. The society, the society to an extent, extent, have they've already started doing their own part by bringing out. Uh, let me say at least seventy-five percent of the society. Those those families that they belong to, they have started bringing them out because I think years back, many decades ago, they do hide them in their house, but now they started bringing them back because, mm. at least, uh, let me take a typical instance now, where I work precisely. Started seeing the, the age range of let me say five, six, seven years, and we, we, sincerely, they are not, they are not, nothing less than twenty. So if it were to be in the park, probably they would just decide to keep them, hide, hide them in the in their homes. But now they started bringing them. The awareness is being created. But okay. now, now when the awareness is being created, bring them out, catch them young, do the early early intervention matters is the key. By the okay. time you start early, let me say if they are hearing impaired, you start teaching them those signs before they reach. Some of them even. Pass out from primary school at the age of uh, 11, 12 years, which is not too bad. 
But you will still see that the society, some you will still see some coming to register their children at the age of 15 years, 16 years. They are just starting for primary one. Primary it's one. not too good. Mm, so those ones are still, they are still not gotten the message that, ah, you, no matter whatever challenge you see, the, uh, you find the, you find your, your, yourself. Or no, no matter whatever condition you see the child, please, the child should be edu educated. We'll be taking a short break right now. And on that break, we'll be getting to know more about our faith. Over to you, Jeffrey. Hi Saints and welcome to another exciting episode of Know Your Faith. Today on the show we will be learning about the benefits of the Holy Spirit. Why should we make him our friend? Now the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. He is the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He is the one who Jesus promised to send to the apostles after his ascension. He is the one about whom Jesus spoke in John's Gospel chapter 14 verse 26. The Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have told you. So why should we have a relationship with him? What are the benefits we get? Firstly, the Holy Spirit is God and God always wants to have a relationship with his people, Christians and sinners alike. He's always there calling us back to repentance and salvation so that we don't spend our eternity in darkness but we fulfill purpose by spending eternity with him in heaven, for that is the aim of our creation. Secondly, the Bible in Matthew chapter 7, verse 16 and 17 tells us that by their fruits you shall know them. A healthy tree bears good fruits, but a poor tree cannot bear good fruits. Fruits here refer to characters and behaviors of humans. Fruits are one thing that every human being bears. A true Christian bears good fruits, while a non-Christian bears bad fruit. St. Paul in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18 tells us, What I say is this, Let the Spirit direct your lives, and you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature. For what our human nature wants is opposed to what the Spirit wants, and what the Spirit wants is opposed to what our human nature wants. Now these two are enemies, and this means that you cannot do what you want to do. If the Spirit leads you, then you are not subject to the law. He goes further to tell us some bad characters to avoid. That is, bad fruit. Immoral and indecent actions, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, jealousy, anger, drunkenness, envy, engaging in immoral sexual urges. These and other vices are what St. Paul warned us about. Those who do these things, we will not possess the kingdom of God. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. Now, luckily for us, St. Paul goes further in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23 to tell us the fruits that we should bear. He refers to them as the fruits of the Spirit. They are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. Now, these are the fruits of Christians, those who worship Christ, and it is through the help of the Holy Spirit that we can bear these fruits. So I hope you see why you should have a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you already have a good relationship with the Holy Spirit, continue in it. And if you don't, it is not too late. Let us invoke the Holy Spirit upon our lives. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Thank you for watching, guys. Till next time, be bold, be Catholic. Thank you very much for that one, Jeffrey. Yes, so we're still talking about integrating and helping the hearing impaired when it comes to spirituality. So um, you were saying something and yeah, you just, just finish it up. Okay, there was something that was uh, like, a, like an oversight. Um, there is this vision or mission we are on, though we've not really started it. Um, if I, I might narrow it down to Catholic Church, we have this simple prayer book. The simple prayer book or the abide in my words that is literally for children. I believe by the special grace of God, we can transcribe that book into sign language. And how do we do it? 
let's assume, okay, we have this word in. This is sign for in. Hmm. We can put this sign here and write I-N on top. Then put this sign in. This is they, they, T-H-E. We put it there, put the hand shape there. Then off. Okay. This is off. Okay. We can do it like that. And by the time we compile this, even those who don't have the interest in learning science, by the time they see, say, ah, what is this all about? Everybody, so many people will pick interest. Mm. Eh? Both the hearing impaired and both the, uh, the, the hearing ones. Most, most people will come. They come to learn the sign language. And then it become a wider... Uh, uh, in fact, the, um, the hearing impaired will love it that so other people have come into their world. Mm. So they will not feel segregated. They will not feel frustrated. Because a lot of people say that they are frustrated human beings and that they, they are too hostile. They are not hostile. Because if you eat wine and dine with them, you see that they are a group of people that need to be cherished and loved. So when you show them that love, when you, feel, when you show them that sense of belonging, have empathy on them, not even sympathy. Don't sympathize with them, just have empathy on them. Show them that, yes, you feel the pain they, 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 their senses are, are passing through. They will now, now open up their, themselves. There are some scenarios that even some of them will confide in you. Take, take for instance, when a hearing impaired is going to, uh, for confession. How, do, how, how does a hearing impaired go for confession? We try to enlighten some of them. Now put, the, put it down. But if that the priest knows this sign language, the, the hearing impaired doesn't need to put down the, the sins or whatever, maybe list it out. But for now, the, the, those, the few of them that have received First Holy Communion, what to encourage them to do? Write it down. Fear Father, I'm hearing impaired. Here are my sins. This is it. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Then the Father will absorb. But then there might still be more to it. There might still be one or two things that the priest would have want, wanted to cancel that hearing impaired because the priest is lacking. There's that communication gap. Mm. So many of them prefer to confide in us, but it's not the best. We are not priests. We are just lay fair force. But okay. so many of them prefer, can confide in the priest if the priest understands, if they know that the priest uh, understands their, their language. So okay. please, the Catholic Church, our chief shepherd, he should help us to do something about it. Okay. He should help us to do something. We are there to make ourselves available. The few mm. of us that are that are catalysts. Or on a wider on a wider range. We have so many of us that are interpreters. But to narrow it down to Catholic Church, we are ready and All we are right. willing. Okay. And we are available by the social grace of God. It's not by our power. Okay, okay. So you have willingly volunteered at this point already. So let us let us hope that this video will get to our chief shepherd someday. Uh, at this point, I just want you to, you know. Give us a foundation right now on sign language. Like, you know, teach us a few things that we, we need to know. Probably ah, very interesting. That is very interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's learn it. That is very interesting. All right, get ready. Get your fingers ready. We're going to be talking with the fingers the right now. The first thing you have to bear in mind when you are teaching sign language, both the, the person to receive the sign language, make sure your hand faces the person who is to receive it, who is go going to learn the sign language. So you mm -hmm. won't have to face the person. Don't put your hand. You want to sign. The person is now man, uh, struggling to look at you. You must face, put your hand, let the, your fingers or your hand, your uh, uh, palm face the person. So this okay. sign for A. a. And when you look at it, this little... Uh, yeah, um, uh, looks uh, like A. Uh, uh, yes. Upper, the lower case of A. This sign A. Yeah. And this is sign for B. B. When you look at it, it looks like letter B, the small le letter. And this is letter C. Look at it here. This the sign for C. C. And this C. is letter D. D. And this is D. Letter D. Okay. And this is letter for E. E. Small letter E. And this is F. F. And this is G. G. Like a gun, as if you want to shoot somebody. <laughs> Although we are not shooting anybody. Yes, letter G. G. And this is American sign language anyway we are using. Though no, it's subject to modification. Because we have a, a, a booklet we call Joy of Signing. Mm -hmm. Most of the signs are there. But when you call, we will narrow it down to Nigeria. Something like Amala. You know, in, in, in the joy of sign, you might not see Amala there. So we sign Amala. We use some local signs. And okay. we, like the states, we have uh, like the states we have here in Nigeria, we have their states. This sign for in um, on, on do. This sign for Ondo. On do. Yes, on because do. they ha usually have mark here. Yeah, this sign for Ibo. This is Ibo. This is Yoruba. Ibo Kwenu. This is Yoruba. Yoruba. And then Yoruba. this is Aousa. This is Aousa. Yeah, because all these ones, you will definitely not get them enjoy, enjoy your signing. So okay. when you come to your head, yeah, you try to modify it to suit the community where you are that pre at that present moment. Okay. And as it is, we still keep on learning. We that are interpreter, we keep on learning on daily basis because mm. it's not our own language. It's a borrowed language, but it's very interesting to learn. So then go back, go, go, uh, going back to the uh, numbers, this is number one. one. This is two. two. This is three. Three. So when you see a deaf person hearing impaired signing like this, this three, this is not three. This is not three. Okay. The, in sign language, this means six. So this okay. is three, three four, four, five, five six, six, seven, seven eight, eight, nine, ten. Once nine, you are able to master ten. the num uh, numbers z uh, zero to nine, you are good to go. 
Okay. And the same thing is applicable to letters. If you're able to master letter A to Z, hmm. any other word you may encounter, you meet along the, the uh, line. You can even think a spell. The most, most important thing is to learn the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Z. If you master A to Z like this, you are good to go. Any other word you, you meet, even we that are uh, using a sign language on daily basis. So there are some words we meet which are new or which are strange with yeah. finger spell. All and right. if you hear yeah. the, you see the hearing impaired, you'll be very happy. You'll be very happy. It's, ah, you know their language. Hmm. You'll be very happy and they will come find you. They'll be very close to you. They are also human beings. Yeah. Nobody prays that you become hearing impaired. I can become hearing impaired tomorrow. But we don't pray for that. Yeah. Thank so, you very, very, <laughs> very much. We've had a power-packed episode, though, and my head is full. Thank you very much for laying a foundation to our learning of sign language. Because right now, I think you should have been able to know the alphabet from A to Z in sign language. So I challenge you today. From today onwards, pick a word that you're going to master in sign language so that when you meet these people outside, you will be able to freely communicate with them. And we very well hope that these um, suggestions that have been made will be put into practice so that these people can be integrated into the society and also into the uh, Catholic Church, into spiritual activities rather. So yes. Thank you very much, Ma, for joining me on this episode, for so gracing much. us with your presence. We've learnt a lot thank from you, you already. Thank you so much. Yes, and thank to you. Dominica you. Media. Yes, yes. Thank, yes. You, so thank you very thank much, you, Dominica Media, for giving us this platform to, you know, explain and pour our hearts out on this topic. Thank you very much to our viewers out there who are watching this episode right now. I've given you an assignment. Make sure you tell me in the comment section below that you have done it or you have started on this challenge or you've given yourself you know some specific time to learn some words on um, sign language and that's all we can take for today it's a wrap but it's not a whole wrap because we have more episodes coming to you on this season till next time make sure you follow subscribe like our video and also follow us on every social media platform till next time keep, keep being saints Sense in in jeans, jeans and, and shirts. Shirts. Bye for now. Bye. Love you.